Well, let's continue on my journey of switching to AMD after five years on NVIDIA GPUs and figuring out what all the buttons do. I love the Radeon software. It seems to have everything that NVIDIA's GeForce Experience has without requiring you to log in with an account. And it seems to combine everything that the NVIDIA control panel does, but without an ancient interface from 1999, or, you know, probably wrong on the dates there. But that thing is pretty outdated looking. Anyway, this also seems to have some cool buttons that NVIDIA doesn't, including Radeon Boost, which I'm going to look at today. I've already done videos on Radeon Chill, and I've used the Performance tab to uh, show how to overclock and undervolt. All right, well, what does Radeon Boost do? Well, the question mark here explains it for the most part, dynamically reduces resolution during motion to improve performance. So basically, it makes your game look worse while you're moving the mouse quickly but that makes it run faster while you're moving the mouse quickly. It says with little perceptible impact on image quality, well, we'll test that out here in a second, and it says it only works in supported games. That's a big deal. For best results, set the game's internal render resolution to 100%. Cool. Now let's talk about the supported games issue. So over here on AMD's website, uh, you can find a list of supported games. Also, I will mention that on here it says that in DX11 titles, it adjusts resolution. In DX12 titles, it adjusts the shading rates, which I'm assuming is like some kind of variable rate shading. Either way, it's doing the same thing. It's making it look worse to run faster, but it seems like it might be using a different method for doing that on DX12. Anyway, if you scroll down, they do have a list of supported titles. And to me, this is the biggest drawback of the feature, which is just, that's less than 20 games. And I think it launched back in 2019 with eight games supported, and we've like barely doubled that now. The game I'm going to be testing out today is Cyberpunk 2077, but also note, remember the DX11, DX12 thing. Some games support this feature in both, but some games only support it in DX12 or only support it in DX11. So that's an important thing to keep an eye on. All right, so here's the game. Now, this is currently running, you know, without any kind of variable rate uh, shading or Radeon boost, I suppose I should say. But to have an idea of not just what this looks like, but how it's performing, how about we pop open that control panel again? Ah, I can't alt tab correctly. And let's open up the performance thing. I usually use uh, MSI Afterburner, but for the sake of testing off Radeon software, how about I just open up my overlay and now we can track everything that we'd want to track here. The main thing we want to see is the, the frame rate. What I like here is we'll get a graph of the frame rate, so you, uh, which could help us visualize things over time, which is pretty cool. Now let's jump back over here and turn on Radeon Boost. So, well actually, first let's leave it off and kind of benchmark this thing. So, okay, I am moving back and forth here. Standing still, moving back and forth. If you're not noticing anything interesting happening, that's good. Nothing interesting should be happening. The frame rate stayed about the same. When I moved quickly, it might have even gone down slightly or stayed about the same. Well, now let's turn on Radeon Boost. Okay, we're turning it on. Notice you do have a minimum resolution slider. So this seems to have a couple of hits. Like if you move the mouse extremely quickly, it's gonna go down to whatever you set here as the minimum resolution, which in this case is 50% as the default. If you move your mouse less quickly, it has a medium setting of 66.6%. Uh, and if you very, or very slowly moving the mouse, it uh, has a, I think it's a, what is it, 83.3%. Uh, so this will obviously be less helpful to your frame rate, but not look quite as bad. We'll start at the default setting of 50%, okay? Now, let's jump back into the game. Now, note this game is running at 1440p right now. So if you're not on, a, if you're on like a 1080p screen, this might not be as obvious to you, but Hey, I'm moving my mouse left and right. Watch my frame rate. Do you notice that we're in the 80s now? Okay. Now I'm going to stop moving my mouse and notice that the frame rate gets back into the 70s. Okay. Moving the mouse quickly. Frame rate goes up into the 80s. Stop. And it goes back into the 70s. That's the basic idea. 
I don't know if it'll show up in my screen capture, but the top left of my screen has a little green square. And when I move the mouse quickly, it turns into a larger square. It also has a medium setting of two little squares instead of one. I believe that that's tracking how fast, like which setting it's on. So this is like the maximum where it goes down to 50%. Here's the in-betweens. Now, because this is a DX12 title, I'm not sure it's really going down to a 50% resolution scale. My understanding is that this would be a variable rate shader, it's, it's, um, which is a little bit different. But correct me in the comments if I'm understanding that wrong. But it's basically doing the same thing. It's making the game look worse. Now, did you notice it? Again, there's some YouTube compression, especially under movement. But I'll do it again before I, I adjust the settings. In my opinion, watch the menus. Watch the bottom left corner, like the HUD elements. They pixelate. They look sharp. Now they pixelate, right? So it's definitely looking worse to improve the performance. Now, one thing I will say is while I'm normally a motion blur off kind of guy, we could turn motion blur on, and I think it helps you not see as much of the pixelation on the movement. Although, by the way, this is really annoying. It senses my mouse movement right now, even though I'm in a menu, and it's pixelating the menu. So I'm not a huge fan of that. <laughs> of course, it's not actual gameplay, but it does look kind of bad. OK, so now with motion blur on, I've got to say that it's hard to tell on a quick movement that that's pixelated. So that's kind of neat. But hey, you know, I don't really like motion blur on. So I've got to say, this is not really my favorite feature I've ever seen. I don't see myself actually using it, but it's kind of cool that it's here. It might be something that you could find worth playing with, maybe if you wanted just really push frame rates in a, in a competitive shooter or something like that, if it supports it. Again, support seems to be the biggest issue. I'm going to turn motion blur back off. And then, um, again, comparing it that. So I can definitely see some pixelation on the movement. I don't know how well YouTube compression is going to show it. But like I said, those menus, you can definitely see it. Now let's try it on one of the other settings. So let's do the more aggressive. So in this case, by more aggressive, I mean I guess I mean less aggressive. So like this won't give me as big of a performance increase, but it probably won't look as bad. OK? The menus are much less noticeable. Honestly, on the movement, much less noticeable. The performance gains are probably also less noticeable. But hey, there's they're still there. It, it is still slightly increasing my frame rate. So you know what? I've got to say, if I was going to use this, I think this is the setting I would use. The one that's not going to show up very much. It, it's less obvious that it's happening. So my overall review of this feature is it's cool. I'd rather have options to do things like this than not. Although personally, it doesn't seem like the kind of thing that I'm going to use in the kinds of games that I play. I'm curious if you guys use this. Do any of you use Radeon Boost? Um, or now that you've seen the video, is it something that you're going to play around with? I would imagine that at lower resolutions, like at 1080p, this is going to look really bad. At 4K, it might be less noticeable, because that's just the case with any kind of render resolution scaling. Um, the more resolution you have to work with, the better the image looks. And the lower resolution you are already, uh, the more obvious it is when it drops. I hope all of you have an excellent day.